Hi, my name is Anya Dibian and I work as a technical officer in the mammal section here at the Australian Museum. My primary interest is flying foxes and the population ecology of these animals. Flying foxes are in fact fruit bats and they belong to a large group of mammals that we call bats. Here in Australia we have four species and the one that I particularly am interested in is the grey-headed flying fox. And these are the large bats that people might see flying around Sydney suburbs at night and occasionally visit their gardens. People often seem to notice them at the colony sites, particularly around dusk, when the bats are all leaving in different directions to find food. No wonder people think they're abundant. However, the grey-headed flying foxes have been listed as vulnerable because their numbers are declining, particularly in the past 20 years or so. And this decline is to be a direct result of habitat loss because of land clearing for agriculture, monocultural forests and other developments. But flying foxes are quite adaptive animals. People are growing native and exotic fruiting and flowering trees in their gardens. And so from the bat's perspective, there is an incentive to move to urban area and stay because food is virtually available all year round. There are many man-made structures that cause mortality to these animals. And some of the main ones I've identified are the electrocutions on power lines, entanglements in barbed wires, and nettings that have been loosely fitted over the trees to protect fruit. And there's also, of course, the shooting in orchards, which is particular concern because it overlaps with the breeding season for these animals. And therefore, when the orchards shoot the female bats that are feeding in orchards, their young are left at the colony site at night, and without their mums returning in the morning, they are likely to die of starvation. The other thing that's becoming more of an issue is actually the climate change and it's posing an increasing threat to the flying foxes because extreme weather can result in heat events where you have thousands, particularly juveniles, that can die in a day. And this is where our collections are coming in. Because we have the animals collected over a period of years and with all the data, i.e. where they're coming from and what they've died from, and some information on their actual characteristics, we can start noticing perhaps the patterns that, of changing of some of these characteristics, but also patterns of geographical and historical changes in their distribution. It is clear that flying foxes have not always been in the best relationship with humans in particular, and often been described as airborne vampires, winged devils, and seen just as pests and vermin that we wanted to get rid of. Flying foxes are quite important for the health of our fragmented ecosystems because they're the only long distance pollinators and seed dispersers. So if you see a flying fox in your garden, don't be alarmed, but instead enjoy the animals visiting your plants because chances are they won't stay for too long and once your fruiting or flowering tree is done, they will move on. So if you see a dead flying fox on power lines between September and December when their breeding season is, Please call wires because they can help and rescue the baby that might still be attached and alive.